So quickly before we jump into this one, I'll give you guys a little bit of a heads up because there's something very cool going on in the headquarters. The other day we talked about a little bit of an update with the Winter Siege final week, that giving us a couple of new contracts, a couple of new orders, and of those new orders, we ended up getting one that was for a two times winter bribe within World War II in which you can get just exactly what it says, two winter bribes rather than just the one that was via a contract two weeks back and then one that was via Amazon Prime. Now, that's something that if you took advantage of that, it's totally awesome. You got your two free bribes or you may be working on this, but if you guys missed that one or if you guys already completed it and want to go for more, today again, there is another daily order in which you can end up getting a two times winter bribe for this from Major Howard. It's simply once again, just for completing, I believe, 30 matches within multiplayer. So you don't have to win. You don't have to lose. It could be any game mode you want, just so long as you finish and stay till the end and it backs you out to the lobby. It counts as a match completed. So it's a very free and easy way to get two winter bribes, which guarantees you three winter siege items instead of just the one that we normally get when we get winter supply drops because it has two of the regular collection items as well. But that said, if you guys want to take advantage of that, it is available right now for you guys to check out. That said, let's jump into the video. So a couple of days ago, maybe about a week back at this point in time, we ended up talking about a bunch of different buffs and nerfs that came in World War II. A little bit of balancing came across the board for a handful of weaponry, and that's some weapons that were some people's favorites, maybe some that made them viable options for others, but there was one particular subset of weapons that I was really drawn to out of these. That was an SMG buff for the MP40 and the M1928. Now, out of this update and this little air quote patch, if you want to put it, because it was just a little general fix for the game, this was something that offered a higher fire rate for both the MP40 and the M1928. The M1928 to me right now is a little bit out of my comfort zone in the fact that if you just hold down the trigger, unless you're close quarters, you're going to have a lot of vertical recoil in which it throws off your aim. And though it can be something that is easy to control, a lot of the times you don't necessarily think about that. And when you're consciously you're like, oh man, this is too much, it might be too late in a gunfight. But the MP40 is one weapon that I absolutely love after this most recent patch. And I talked about this in a video where we compared the two and talked about the best weapon out of this. And so I figured let's do a follow-up because I've been using this thing a ton recently and there's actually no other reason for it other than the fact that it shreds. I've completed this weapon on my road to Chrome Camo. So before this update and this patch, I really hadn't played with it for weeks, maybe a month at that point in time because it was one of the first guns that I got gold, but I came back to it and it shreds. So I'm gonna give you guys the class setup I have here for you guys and we'll jump right into that with this one here. So starting at the top down, once again, this is an MP40 class. So I'm gonna start out with a division of airborne. Now, this is one in which I think is very advantageous for SMGs naturally, simply because they fit the narrative that the airborne division wants to push in game, but it also helps that you get that longer sprint duration, that mantling faster, other things like that that come along, especially if you have your division ranked up. But of course the silencer is always great if you wanna play that inconspicuous or under the radar type of game in which you can just stealth around like a little ninja there. But honestly, recently, I think that it's kind of been a little bit of a toss up. I've been playing around with a lot of SMGs in infantry division simply because you get those extra magazines. And then you also have that higher strafing speed, which is definitely nice to have on SMGs. You can pre aim corners a little bit. So you can round a corner if you know somebody's there, or you can take it a little bit slower because sprint out times are, of course, not the greatest in this game. As well, the extra a lot of attachment can give you a different way in which you can take a different basic training if you don't want to use primed. So it's really all kind of which one you feel is best fit for you. I definitely think that you could swap out for another basic training, which we'll get to in a second. But for this specific class setup, I really do like the extra movement speed. I like the ability to run faster and for longer distances. And so to me, I think that this one for this specific class is what I'd do. Now, obviously, once again, like we said, this is an MP40 class. So we're going to be running the MP40 with three attachments that gives away our basic training, which is, as you could probably pick up if you've seen a lot of these class setups, one of my favorite basic trainings, that being primes. But that said, we're going to be running quick draw, grip, and extended mags here on this. Now, I'll explain each of these in a little bit of depth for you guys, give you my reasoning, because some people may choose other things, but I like these ones a lot on this class setup. Firstly, I don't mind the iron sights, so I don't need to use the lens sight or the red dot within World War II. I'm perfectly fine with the iron sights on the MP40. There are some weapons that I absolutely cannot stand the iron sights for, but the MP40 is not one of them. Of course, it would be better to end up having a little bit more viewpoint out of this, but it's close enough that I think that you can get it and manage it 
with relative ease. So that said, quick draw allows you to get your gun up faster, which in close quarters gunfights, which these are definitely suited for, that helps out tremendously. And with the sprint out times being so awful within World War II, sometimes it does bug quick draw out, but a lot of the times I also will stop myself before I run into a gunfight. I'll stop before a corner and then be able to get that gun up quickly with quick draw without it having to negate its effect because of the sprints out time. But all in all, it is something that still, I think, relatively helps out in enough of a manner that it's definitely worth it. Grip obviously reduces recoil, and that's something that is definitely nice. The recoil on the MP40 is not a lot compared to other weapons, but it definitely is noticeable if you do not try to counter by pulling down with your right stick to match that recoil pattern, but it is something that helps out tremendously, I think, and therefore I like to run on this. I usually like to challenge some medium to maybe longer range gunfights even, which I know that I should not do with an SMG, so therefore this grip really does help out in those situations more so than anything else. But that said, that leads me into the final attachment here at the this one, that being extended mags, and that's simply because, well, I like to have magazines, I like to have ammunition, and the ability to not have to reload after every two kills or so, that's beautiful. That's something that really does come in handy. Some of the gunfights you'll end up seeing in this video in the background footage, you'll see that I can challenge multiple more people than I normally would be able to. I get a couple of triple kills, maybe even a quad. I don't remember if that's in this footage or not, but it is because of the simple fact that I don't have to reload after each of these. Granted, it adds about 30% of ammunition into the magazine, so you have about 133% of what you end up having normally, but it is still something that helps out greatly. So definitely, I think one that is worth it. Of course, if you really want to get adventurous with it, you can put rapid fire on instead if you don't necessarily want a grip or extended mags to make that fire rate that was already buffed even greater, but that's something that I feel comfortable with this setup. Now, as for the basic training, once again, I rock primed just for that extra attachment, but this is where we start to get into those sorts of situations where you can swap things out for others, because if you want to use this with infantry division, you already have that extra allotted attachment slot, so you don't necessarily have to use prime for it, or even if you don't want to use, say, a grip or extended mags or a quick draw and you just want to run two of them, I'd recommend running hustle so that you have that ability to reload faster and while moving because that always is a great help in gunfights, especially if you're running with an SMG trying to get in the face of your enemies. So definitely something that has room to manage how you feel, but primed for me, I absolutely love it with that extra attachment slot, having the movement speed of airborne division, and then of course, having that extra reduction in flinch, though it is drastically nerfed compared to what it was, I'll still take that any day. Now, as for what I run for the secondary and the lethal, again, I don't really ever rock these in terms of that many situations in which I stray from the path from my primary, but just to have them and to finish off the class setup, I rock the PO8 with extended mags on this, or in a lot of other cases, the machine pistol with extended mags, depending on what rank I am at the time. Both, I think, are very valid. The machine pistol got a massive nerf, so it's not as good compared to what it was. So for those of you guys that may be thinking, you know what, that might be a little bit too OP, that's kind of a cheap thing to put on your class. Right now, again, I think it's just kind of a toss up and I don't even really even use it that much. But the next thing and the final thing is a frag grenade simply because I like to chuck a grenade into a hole or so whenever I know somebody's around a corner in a general area, I can get hit markers, kind of feel them out or maybe even get the kill for myself out of that. So it's pretty nice. And of course, that's something that's just kind of there. I don't necessarily need it in the class setup, but nonetheless, that's the class setup. But the final two things I want to mention here for you guys, because there are two big things, one's good, one's bad, are these two things about the weapon itself. Firstly, the positive, I think that this is right up there with relatively the highest movement speed of all primary weapons. So if you guys are trying to play that run and gun style, this is of course already a great choice, but with the buff to the fire rates and of course now the damage, like we talked about being superior to even that of the M1928, it's relatively right around a three shot close and then four at medium to long and five at long ranges like that. So it's already a great choice, but then you add in this buff that it got in which the fire rate made it even better, well, of course, you can't go wrong there. Now, the downside, though, is that the aim assist on this weapon is really bad. Like, I'm talking almost non-existent. And that's something that if you don't necessarily have the greatest aim to begin with, you sometimes can be at a disadvantage because if somebody starts to strafe back and forth, they might throw you off a little bit and you're not gonna have that immediate snap like you would with some other weapons and auto aim in either this game or in past games. So bear that in mind, but overall, I think that you can totally shred with this class setup. And I'd love to get your thoughts and feedback here down in the comments on this. I love this class setup. Once again, I have absolutely no reason to return to it in the grand scheme of things. 
but I do because it's so good. I love this class setup. I think it can really help you out and it can really give you guys a good advantage going into games. So that said, try it out for yourselves. Tweet me your thoughts, tweet me your results, all that good stuff. And also let me know in the comment section down below. But hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure you drop a like down below. And of course, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys subscribe so you don't miss a single thing regarding Call of Duty World War II. Class setups, tips, tricks, news, information, leaks, all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel. Once again, thank you guys so much for 100,000 subscribers. We hit that earlier in the week. Absolutely mind-blowing for the amount of support that you guys have given me over the years, and I cannot thank you guys enough for hitting that milestone. So thank you guys. And finally, if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter, that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube. I practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said and out of the way, hope you guys had a fantastic night. It is New Year's Eve, and thank you guys so much for an absolutely amazing 2017. Here's to an even better year. I wish you all nothing but the very best. Thank you guys all so much for everything. Might as well express. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good rest of the year and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care and peace.